All right, thanks for watching. And today I will prove the rational roots theorem, which again, it's a very nice theorem that gives you a little bit information about the structure of rational roots of a polynomial. Namely, it tells that if this polynomial has a rational root, then the numerator has to divide the constant term and the denominator has to divide the leading term. Now, if you're my student, I know you're very tempted to skip proofs, but especially in this class, you shouldn't because this is analysis. Proofs are the main character of the class, not just uh, supporting roles. So, and the proof, in fact, is very neat. It just uses a little bit of algebra, even though this is an analysis course. So we have to start with a little lemma, which I don't really prove here, but hopefully you've shown this in previous classes. Namely, if a number a divides b and c, b times c, so a, b, c, they're all numbers, and a and b have no factors in common, then it turns out A has to divide C. See. In other words, again, if A divides that product and basically A and B are independent, then A has to divide that second number. Uh, for instance, um, we know five divides let's say three times 25, but you see five and three have no factor in common. So in fact, uh, five divides 25. Which hopefully makes sense, at least uh, mind-wise. And uh, now let's use that to prove the rational roots theorem. So in other words, the rest again is just a little bit of algebra. So suppose, So suppose x is a root, root of a to the n, x to the n, plus etc, etc, plus a1x, plus a0 equals 0. Where, again, very important, we'll use that later, but p and q have no factors in common. That was one of the statements of the theorem. And then all you have to do is plug in p over q in your root. So maybe in that. So then, what do we have? So a n, again, p over q to the n plus a n minus 1, p over q to the n minus 1 plus dot 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 plus a1 p over q plus a naught equals 0. And of course, expand this out. And I know there are a lot of symbols here, but again, I just want to emphasize it's just a matter of reducing a fraction. So a n p to the n over q to the n plus a n minus 1, p to the n minus 1 over q to the n minus 1, plus dot dot dot, plus a1, p over q, plus a naught equals 0. And now let's put this on a common denominator. If you see, the common denominator is q to the n, so really this becomes a to the n, p to the n, plus a to the n minus 1, p to the n minus 1. To complete this, you need a factor of q, etc., etc. a1, p, in order to complete this to q to the n, you need q to the n minus 1 more factors, and then a0, q to the n, again, over q to the n equals 0. But the nice thing is, remember, q is non-zero, so you can just eliminate that. And ultimately, you get the following equation. 
And essentially all that's left is in each equation what we want to do first we would like to solve for a n uh, p to the n and in the second step we just want to solve for a naught q to the n so again that was the first step just plug in p over q put everything on a common denominator In the first step, I mean, it doesn't matter which way you do it, but in this step, we want to solve for a and p to the n. In other words, put all the other terms on the right-hand side. So what we get is a, a n p to the n becomes minus a n minus 1, p to the n minus 1, q dot 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 minus a naught q to the n and notice what's nice here is in all those terms there's a factor of q in common that's why we did it we want to isolate the term without q and we want to put all the other terms with q on the right hand side so what you're left with is a n p to the n equals minus q times a n minus 1 p n minus 1 dot 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 plus a naught I think q to the n minus 1 oh, small typo there okay um, okay now what's the upshot look at the right hand side of course q divides the right hand side here because the right hand side is q times something but in particular, because this equals this, Q also has to abide this thing. For instance, if we say this thing is 2 times something, well, it's even, so because it's even, 2 also has to abide this thing. But it shows with Q instead of 2. So again, because Q divides the right-hand side, it follows that Q divides. A N p to the n. Okay. But here's the thing. q divides this with, if you like, it's p to the n, a n. Now, remember that p and q are independent of each other, but okay, p and q have no factors in common. So even if you take products of p, like p squared, p cubed, it's still independent of q. So uh, q and p to the n have no factors in common. And so what do we have? q divides p to the n times a n, but Q and P to the N, they're independent of each other. So in fact, by our lemma, it follows that Q has to divide A N. But wait, that's exactly what we wanted. Remember in the rational roots theorem, it says if X is P over Q, you have to show that Q divides the leading term and that's exactly what we did. And the beautiful thing is, the other step of the proof is almost exactly the same, except we take our equation and solve for a naught q to the n. So very quickly, just to conclude. Step three. So solving. Again, forget everything I talked about and not just solve for a naught q to the n. Then I believe, again, our original equation was a n p to the n plus dot 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 plus a1 p q n minus 1 plus a naught q to the n. It's 0. And now we want to solve for this. And so what we get is a naught to the n 
that becomes minus a n uh, p to the n dot 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 minus a one p q to the n minus one. But this time there's a factor of p in common, so this becomes if you want what was it minus p times a to the n p to the n minus one dot 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 plus a one q to the n minus one. And again, completely symmetric. What do we get? P divides the right-hand side. Therefore, by equality, P divides the left-hand side. So P divides A naught Q to the N. But since uh, P and Q to the N have no common factors, P must divide, again, P divides the product, but P and Q to the N are independent of each other, therefore P has to divide this coefficient. A naught. And we can just put our box of victory because we are done. QED. And again, I know it looks like a horrible proof. I was terrified the first time I saw this, but it's just a matter of rearranging factors here and there. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.